Okay guys, well, we're finally here. It took way too long, but I'm glad that uh, the new release is about to come out. Um, I'm just going to walk through some features that I find particularly cool, but you'll need to look at the release notes to see the full story because there's quite a lot there. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, let's jump into it. So we'll start with just a couple of small UI changes. The first one, as you can see, we've got these nice little slim scroll bars here compared to the chunky ones that we had previously. So yes, that design is patented. Um, not actually. Um, that looks quite nice. Um, we've got some section headers in our uh, key bindings menu now to make things a bit clearer. We also have more uh, tool tips um, because many of these things warrant a bit of an explanation on what they do. Um, so that's cool. Um, the section headers there was, um, was Stefan Haller, as was the slim scroll bar. And you're going to find out that Stefan's behind many of the features in this, in this release. You can now see these little icons here, or little, little indicators on what button to press to jump to different side panels. That was, uh, Maria Jose Solano. So thanks to Maria. Um, there's now contextual key binding. So if you see down here at the bottom, uh, it's got, it's now showing actual key bindings that are the ones you probably want to be using in a given view so that you don't have to jump to this menu to see what's what. Um, and also if you, for example, are in a specific mode, like say if I do a, a rebase here, it will give me a suggestion on what button to press. And in this case, you press M so that you can go and abort the rebase. That's cool. Um, you'll, you'll notice there's now for some errors, like when a key binding is disabled, you'll see a little um, uh, error, hang on, where is it? This one. You'll see a little error toe. So for example here, if I'm trying to paste commits without having copied anything, I just get that little message there, rather than uh, a pop-up that I have to acknowledge, because that pop-up can often be a little bit annoying. Um, what else? If you look at the files view, you'll see that unstaged changes are now in white, not red. I mean, find that just a bit easier on the eyes. Um, also, we have colored icons now, and that that's um, thanks to Ashish Sharma. Um, also, if you, let me just get rid of this and undo. Um, you can now uh, configure to have it when you maximize um, a side view that it shows up at the top as opposed to on the side, which could be useful for things like branches where you want to get a bit more information or with commits. Um, it's not the default, so you need to check the release notes to see how to configure that. Um, we show fetching statuses inline. Uh, likewise with, um, well, in this case, I actually couldn't fetch because I might have, uh, I can't recall what the issue is there. But um, likewise, if you want to, if you want to, uh, you know, pull a branch, uh, you'll see the status inline rather than in a pop-up menu. And in this case, I've got some configuration issue here, so please ignore that. Um, anyway, back to my previous branch. Um, we always show the log graph by default now. So you can see here, like the actual individual commits. Um, we show it by default in the minimize view. Previously, you'd only see it if you're in the maximize view, um, but users were asking for it. So if you're if you're in a repo that has like loads of merge commits, it might get a bit too noisy down there, um, but you can configure it to, to not do that. And you can check the release notes for that. Um, what else? Mixed reset is now the default when you press G on a branch. So keep that in mind. The reason for that is we found that mixed reset was just um, the one that almost everybody wants to use. And it's kind of funny that it's called mixed and not soft because it's actually softer in a way than soft reset in that it doesn't stage the files to get put in the working tree. Um, and what else is there? That's just some small UI changes. Now I want to walk through some of the actual features. So this is the fun part. First of all, previously when you were building a uh, like a commit or you were trying to stage individual lines, you could um, press V to select a range of lines. Um, now you can do that in other places as well. So down here in the commits view, I can highlight multiple commits and then perform some action on them. So for example, say that I wanted to drop these three commits here. Um, 
Previously, I'd have two options for that. One is just going one by one and pressing D to drop them. So let me just undo back where I was. Or you could go down to the next commit, press E to edit it, and then mark these three as drop commits and then continue. And both of those approaches are kind of laborious. So what you can do now is you just uh, either press V and then move down, or you can just hold shift and use the arrow keys. Um, you just highlight the commits, you press D and you drop them. So that's pretty cool. And you can do that same thing with fix ups and squashes. Um, even if you are doing an interactive rebase, you can select multiple commits and move them around as well. Um, so yeah, it's awesome. I've been using it for a while now. Um, and uh, it's just been hugely productive. So pardon me, that's been really cool. Um, and you can use it for various things. Like if I um, if I go to the, the files panel again, you can stage multiple files, you can delete multiple at once. Um, you can go to a, um, uh, what's an example here? You can go to an individual commit. You can select multiple commit files. If you wanna add them to a patch and do something with them. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, okay, uh, something to note with that is because the V key binding was already used for pasting commits, we've had to resolve that conflict now. So in order to copy commits, it's now shift C and to paste them, it's shift V. Um, if you just press regular C, you get a little message here saying like how it's changed and how you can configure to go back to the old behavior. Um, but uh, yes, that's just an unfortunate breaking change we had to make in order to support that V key binding um, uh, in any uh, list view. Um, so that's cool. And I'm just picking what would be a nice one to move on to after that. So uh, another one would be um, you can now, if you, if I'm, let me just get a little commit here. Check this out, blah, blah. If I type a commit message, it now automatically wraps it for me. And by wrapping, I mean it's hard wrapping. So it's adding a new line character. I can go in here and I can type some more stuff and it rewraps it. I can go and edit this guy and then add more stuff again. Um, so that's really cool. It's wrapping at 72 characters. If that's too narrow for you, you can change that in the config and again just check the release notes to see how to do that um, that was Stefan Haller behind that one so thanks to Stefan because that has been an awesome feature um, what else okay here's a cool one so uh, I don't know why it took us so long to do this but when I go to check out a remote branch um, like for example um, let's m maybe this one here uh, damn it that doesn't count because it already was I already had checked it out Ugh. That's a good example. Um, this one here. Okay, if there's a, if you're trying to check out a remote branch that you haven't already checked out locally, you now get an option to check it out as a local branch or as a detached head. Previously, it would always do it as a detached head, which pretty much no one ever wants. Um, so now I can say yes, do it as a local branch. Um, and here I am. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can see that it's tracking the remote here. Uh, so yeah, that's just something that is a nice little quality of life improvement because basically everybody wanted that from the beginning. Um, okay, that was our Stefan Haller again. So thanks to Stefan for that. Um, here's a cool one. Now, how do I get back where I was? Because I really like that previous branch. Uh, here we are, okay. So I showed you before how that you, you would start an interactive rebase by navigating down to the base commit and pressing E. But that's kind of annoying. So you gotta navigate all the way down, press E, and come back up to whatever you want to do. Now you just press I and LazyGit will intelligently decide what the base commit should be. So in this case, uh, it seems like it's picking the first merge commit, but it would either pick that or it would pick uh, whatever the the first commit on your branch is to be the base branch. So that uh, should speed things up quite a bit. Um, typically when you do a rebase, you just want to do it for every every commit on your branch, assuming that there's no merge commits there. 
in a similar vein, if you press Shift S, you now get uh, the choice to just apply all fix up in your current brand. So previously, so I've got these four fix ups here. I'd come down to this commit, press Shift S, and then say yes, apply the fix ups. But now I can just I don't need to navigate down. I can just say yep, just do all the ones in the current branch, and it'll work. Um, so that's cool. That's Stefan Heller again. Um, what else? Another one by Stefan is. Viewing divergence from the upstream branch. So maybe this is a good example here. If you press U on a branch, uh, the you get like the upstream branch options, and the first option there is to view the divergence. So you can come in here and see, you know, uh, what are the commits that are on the remote that I have to pull, and what are the ones that I can push. Um, so yeah, that's an awesome feature. Um, uh, this one's complete voodoo. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this. And so often you'll be working on a pull request and someone gives you some feedback and says, oh, you should make this small change here. And you wanna have a clean commit history. So you say, okay, well, I'm gonna make a fix up commit that targets the original commit that introduced this change. So the problem you have is that you need to go through each of the commits and work out which one houses the changes that you have just made an amendment to. So. That is really laborious. And what you can do now is, if you press Control S, and on my system it's, I've remapped it to Shift F just because it was uh, clashing with a different key binding. But if you press Control S, um, it will, LazyGit will go through the commits and find the matching commit. Um, that's like the appropriate one to fix up. So if I press Shift F here, boom. It just moved down to this one here. And you can see in the reps helper, this is the thing that it added. Maybe it was this thing, no this thing. Um, so you can come down here, you press F to create a fixer commit, or you can press A, Shift A to amend it. Um, this is like the first cut, so we want to get feedback on this. It's very strict, so when it matches something, you know for certain it's the right commit. But it also means if, if there's any ambiguity, it just doesn't attempt to find it, and you're left to your own devices to find it. Um, for example, if you're change only involves added lines, like for example, you've added a comment to an existing function, then it won't actually know where the base is because it depends on the removed lines to decide what the base is. Um, so yes, that was Stefan again, and that is just an awesome feature that I hope you can all try out and, and give us some feedback on. What else? Uh, you can, let me just delete this guy here. You can now delete remote branches and tags. So if I press D on a, uh, branch, I can choose to delete the remote branch. Likewise with tags, and uh, with the tag you specify the actual remote to uh, to remove the, the tag from. Um, so that was Asriel sec for, uh, who made that feature, so thanks to Asriel. You can also add a co-author to a commit. So if I come down here and I say, you know what, uh, actually I've already, I've already done that on that commit. Let's say we go to this commit. And I say, I want to press A to amend an attribute. I'm going to say, I am a co-author on this one because I helped out. You can do that. And then you'll see the little thing here. And like, uh, you know, co uh, GitHub is able to parse that and make sense of it. Um, so that's cool. That was Omausa who made that feature. So thanks for that. Um, you can now also filter commits by author. So how do I filter commits? Let's just find out. Filter. Okay. Um, I can filter by everything that Stefan Heller, Heller has done. I can do it based on all the stuff that I've done. Um, so yeah, that's a nice little feature. That's by part 22, so thanks for that. Um, you can now also change the branch sort order. So if you press S in the branches view, you can change the way it's sorted. The default is by recency, which is to say when was the branch last checked out and we use the ref log to find that out. That's still the default, but now you can do like alphabetical, maybe that's what it's currently on, um, date based in terms of the last commit date and then back to recency again. So likewise with the remote branches view, uh, it's currently in alphabetical. I can also do date based. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and that is Hosaka who did that feature. Okay, um, next one is uh, hard to demo, but I'll just verbally describe it. It's better bare repo support. So that's John Whitley who did that. Previously, if you use LazyGit to 
for example, work on some dot files, um, it would just, there was just various problems and we fixed all of them. Um, so yes, it works a lot better with uh, bare repos now. Um, cool. So I think those are the main things I wanted to walk through, but there's a lot there. Like if you just have a look at my notes here, there's just so many things that have changed. So I recommend you to have a read through, see what's changed. Um, like I said, like there's like 600 commits here. And yes, it took way, way too long to release this thing. From now on, we'll do um, monthly releases. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, I'm super hyped to see how you find this new release. And I'm looking forward to hearing all your feedback. Um, so yeah, I guess now I'm going to quickly just plug my new startup. Um, but uh, at any rate, thanks for watching and I'll uh, talk to you next time. If you work at the typical tech company, you know firsthand just how out of control SaaS subscriptions get. You've got Confluence and Jira and GitHub and Slack and everyone's got their own subscription to it. And the company just bleeds money to unused seats and bad pricing structures. Not to mention, onboarding and offboarding of SaaS apps is typically done by some person manually. So if you leave a company and that person forgets to offboard you from something, you will still have access. That means that the company is paying for your license uh, unnecessarily and it poses a security threat because you've got an ex-employee who has access to their data. Me and a couple friends thought this was a big enough problem that we decided to quit our jobs and go full-time on solving it. And thus, Zembu was born. We're still early days, but we believe we can save your company time and money and improve its security. Uh, so check out our website, zembu.au where you can join our free beta program. Um, and let's see if we can save you some money. So again, that's zenbu.au. Thanks for listening.